kind of the goal here is to just walk through like a really simple use case of Plumber Tableau to highlight a couple of things. One, how it relates to Plumber and how it kind of extends what Plumber can already do. And then the other piece here is to just kind of showcase like what what is Plumber Tableau trying to, to solve from the developer perspective? So as an, as an R user, what, what do I get out of this tool? And then the other side is like, as a, as a Tableau developer or Tableau user, how do I leverage something that's been developed in Plumber Tableau? What's the, what's the um, workflow and what's the pattern for using this once it's been developed? So that's, that's kind of the, the goal here. Um, I'll, I think there might be a few assumptions about uh, kind of prerequisite Plumber knowledge, but I'll try to kind of highlight some of the main ideas if, if there's some unfamiliarity there. But just like I said, the, the use case here is really simple, but I think it will help us kind of ignore, or not necessarily ignore, but it'll, it'll give us something concrete that we can work with that's not overly complex. Uh, so we can focus instead on how the, the tool's working rather than what we're trying to accomplish with it. So all that being said, the idea is I want to capitalize some text. <laughs> super easy but and, and in an r i could do that with just like the two upper function that's already there um but to make this a little bit easier to kind of think about we're going to write our own function called caps which takes some input text and then we're going to use two upper in here on our input text so again nothing crazy but the idea is we can give this some sort of string hello world and we'll get back the capitalized form of that now Let's say that for some reason, this functionality is super critical to some Tableau document that I have, right? I have a bunch of text and it has to be capitalized for my executives. And this is the way I'm gonna do it. Now, it's a stretch, but that's the, that's the scenario, scenario we're gonna work with. So the idea is this function right now just lives in R. And what I really want is, is first, I wanna kind of make this accessible to other tools generically, and then we'll worry about Tableau. So the way, one of the ways to do that is to use the plumber package and to turn this function that we've defined into an API. So I'm gonna bring in plumber now. And then plumber works by using special comments to change existing R functions, like what we have written here, into API endpoints that can respond to common HTTP requests. So it's, it's nice in the sense that I don't necessarily have to write a bunch of new code to turn this into an API. I just have to add some new comments to do that. So we're gonna come in and the, the special kind of signifier for Plumber is the standard comment symbol followed by an asterisk. And then there are these kind of decorators that begin with the at symbol that we can use to define different pieces and components of what we want Plumber to do and how we want it to handle the functions we define. So I'm gonna create an API title here. We'll call this simple capital capitalization example. Uh, we'll give it a description. Capitalized some text. Okay, so these are, this is just a generic kind of title description for the API and collection of different endpoints. In our case, we're only building this one function, this caps function. So I'm going to create a little description for this. This is capitalize input text and return the result. And then here's kind of the, the significant part. Here's where I define, okay, we're gonna listen for post requests at the capitalize path. So here's here's kind of the significant part where I, where I tell Plumber, look, respond to these types of requests at this location. And whenever a request comes in that matches that criteria, this function will be executed with the contents of that request on a very kind of simplified way. So I'm gonna just go ahead and save this here so that we can use some of the RStudio niceties. So now once I've saved this as a plumber file, you'll see that RStudio gives me this run API option. And if I select this here, we get this cool little interface that pops up in our in our viewer pane. And this is a, a UI user interface that's been generated dynamically by Plumber in combination with Swagger, which is the, the rendering tool that's being used here. And this shows us, you know, here's our Here's our title, here's our description. And if I change the values, right, we see capitalize some text is, is what we see over here. And if I went back and changed that and reran this, we'd see the change updated here. And if I come down here to capitalize, we can expand this out. We see our input text here. Uh, we see an inf some information about the different types of responses we might get back. And I can actually go ahead and try this out. And we can say, hello world. And we can hit execute. And there we go. We have our response back, a capitalized form of what the input that we provided. Awesome. Now, at this point, like we've done like 95% of the work 
necessary to get this to work inside of Tableau. And, and in fact, if we just take a step back and kind of ignore Tableau for a second and think about what we've done kind of more broadly, we've taken this function that we wrote that capitalizes text, and we've kind of turned it into this service that can be used regardless of the tool that's using it, right? Like I could, somebody writing Python or somebody writing Go or somebody writing C++ or Java or whatever could call out to this service and say, hey, here's some text to capitalize. And then R would execute what it needs to do and return back the capitalized text. So we made this kind of very generic interface to our function, which can be super, super useful. Now, at this point, if I want to get this to Tableau, I have into Tableau, there's kind of like a couple of routes I could go. One is I could start figuring out how exactly Tableau wants to communicate with external services. Tableau has a very specific way of sending requests and, and a very specific way in which it expects responses. And I could go through and I could build out an API that meets that criteria or, or meets the contract that Tableau expects an API to meet. Or I could use the Plumber Tableau package, which does all of that work for me. And so I'm gonna go ahead and bring in Plumber Tableau now, which as the name suggests is a package that expands the functionality of Plumber to make it easy to build APIs essentially that, that operate as analytics extensions inside of Tableau. So once I bring the Plumber Tableau package in, there's kind of two things that I now need to do. One is there's a couple of new annotations that I need to provide when I describe my function. One is uh, Tableau arg, and then one is Tableau return. And, and as you can probably kind of guess from the naming, Tableau arg is where we define the arguments that we expect Tableau to be providing. In this case, that's this input text argument. And we might have multiple arguments. We can have input text one and input text two, or you know, we, we can have different things. Maybe there's parameters. Again, this is a very simple use case, but perhaps I have a, a previously trained machine learning model and I'm expecting Tableau to submit new data and then I'm going to run that new data through my model and generate predictions and, and then send the prediction, the predicted outcomes back to Tableau for further analysis. In which case I might have you know, a dozen or more different inputs that I expect to come from Tableau. And each one of those can be accompanied by this Tableau arg, uh, this Tableau arg specification here that allows me to define well, some information about that argument. So here we're gonna say this is input text is the name of the argument. And its type is, uh, if I could spell, its type is character, right? Uh, and then here's a brief description. This is the text we want capitalized. Okay, easy enough. Tableau return is what is my extension sending back to Tableau? I first need to define what type of what data type I'm sending back. So again, I'm gonna be sending back a character value. And this is the capitalized input text, okay? So those two new things, Tableau arg and Tableau return. And then the last piece here is I need to add this modifier down at the bottom. And a modifier is simply a function that, that makes changes to an existing plumber router. So here, the way to do that in this context is to use this plumber decorator. And then we're going to say Tableau extension. And this is a function. In fact, we can just look at this really quickly. This is a function that is exported from plumber Tableau. It's one of the only functions that the package actually exports. Um, and this, and there's an example here of, of how you might use that in the way that we're using it here. But essentially this function does all the necessary modification to the underlying API so that it matches and behaves the way that Tableau wants it to. And the advantage here is this means that as the, as the R developer, I don't need to necessarily worry about how Tableau is communicating with my API. I can trust that the API will communicate appropriately as long as I use this modifier once I've defined everything that I want to define within my API. Okay, so I'm gonna save the file. Again, just to review, we brought in the Plumber Tableau package, we added Tableau arg and Tableau return, and we modified the API with this Tableau extension function. You might notice that I'm not actually executing the function, um, and that's just kind of the, a, a semantic of Plumber itself. So here is, is the function name or the function reference. I'm not executing the function, but I'm indicating call this function on the API that's previously defined. And, and allow that function to modify the API as it, as it needs to. With these changes in place, if I run the API again, I see basically the same page, but there's a few kind of subtle differences. One is these new links show up here. These are automatically generated as part of this Plumber Tableau package. And, and we won't spend time looking at them here, but we will kind of in a moment once we transition to deployment. 
But if I scroll down and open up my capitalized endpoint again, now things look very different. And the reason is, is because one of the things that, that a Plumber Tableau does is it automatically will create and generate documentation about how Tableau is going to interact with this particular extension, as well as an example request of what Tableau is going to submit. So here, this, this request that we see here is in the format that Tableau will be submitting requests. Tableau submits a JSON object with two kind of nested values, script and data. And so we see those referenced here. And then the data object contains the actual data values that are being passed over from Tableau. If we inspect this, we can see that, that arg1 is the first value here. Um, and if we, if we look just above this, this table here shows a mapping between what my function in R has defined and what Tableau is going to submit. So we can see that input text in my R function corresponds to R1 in this Tableau data object. It's a character type value. And here's a description of what that value is. And it's not optional. Right? It's, a, it's a required field. I can still try this out. So I can click try it out. I can come in here and change the value of arg1 to hello, everyone. Execute this. And if we scroll down, we see the capitalized version of that text being returned back. Now, I'm going to kind of pause there and, and highlight a couple of things. One is, as the like our developer here, I haven't touched Tableau. I haven't opened Tableau. I haven't needed to look at Tableau. I haven't needed to visit Tableau's website. But regardless of that, I've been able to build an extension and verify that it will work with Tableau because I have an example of what a Tableau request will look like. Let me just open this up one more time, right? When I click try it out in here and run this request and say, this, this is a test, this is me verifying, yep, this extension seems to be doing exactly what I expected to be doing. And I have confidence that it will behave that way when it's connected to Tableau. So the advantage is I can do all of this within a tool that I'm comfortable and familiar with. In this case, I'm using our studio workbench. I, can, I might be using our studio on my desktop. I might not be using our studio. I might be developing this in some other editor or some other form. But regardless, I have access to this interface either directly in our studio or in a browser. And I can test and verify the behavior of my extension without needing to either open Tableau myself or rely on somebody that has Tableau access. And that was one of our goals. There's, you know, if I, if I take a step back and just look at some of the philosophy that went into designing Plumber Tableau, part of this was to say, we want to make things easy for both, both um, like populations here. One is the developers. How do we make things easy for them? When we, we build and extend tools that they're already comfortable and familiar with, which is why we chose to extend Plumber uh, and, and use that framework. We also make it easy for them to test, validate, and confirm the behavior of things without needing to rely on other tools, which is what we just observed. The other side of this is how do we help the Tableau user? Right? They might not know anything about R. They might not know anything about Plumber or any, any of these tools. They just are building Tableau workbooks and dashboards and visualizations, and they want access to the things that have been built here. Now, in some organizations, the R developer and the Tableau developer might be the same person or might work together on the same team. In other organizations, they may have no idea who one another are, right? It might be two totally separate groups, two totally separate individuals. Um, and we wanted that to, we wanted to support that type of distinction between these two roles. Okay, now at this point, I have a fully functioning running Tableau extension that I've built in R. The problem is Tableau cannot access it at this point, right? And now if I was running, say for example, I was running, um, our studio desktop and I had to have low desktop, I could stitch these things together. Like I could run the API inside of our studio desktop. I could open up Tableau desktop. I could configure them to speak to one another and, and that would be great. But that's like a very limited utility because it's still just, everything's still local to me, right? Everything's still running on my desktop and I'm not gonna like pass my laptop around the department to give people access to my dashboard. I need some sort of centralized hosting mechanism. On the Tableau side, that's either gonna be Tableau online or Tableau server. On the R, the R side, um, the easiest way to distribute and share and provide access to this extension is through our Studio Connect. And our Studio Connect is a publishing platform that supports publishing all kinds of different R and Python content, including these Tableau extensions, like the one that we've built here. And in order to publish this to, to our Studio Connect, I can select this little publish button here inside of the R Studio development environment. I can click publish a, uh, API. 
and then select details about where I want to publish it, the name of it, things like that. Now, I've already gone through and published this API or one very similar to it. So I'm going to just open that now. So I'm going to come into RStudio Connect. Let me navigate to this particular API. And there, there will, we'll notice there's a few subtle differences here in what we look at in terms of the title and description of the API, but the behavior and, and everything like that is the same. So this is this is the that same API that we were just working with now published on our Studio Connect. And something that you'll immediately notice is this looks very different than what we saw before, right? When we ran this inside of our studio, we saw an interface that looked like this. If you've done any sort of API development or API work before, you're likely familiar with this type of interface. It's a very common way of uh, kind of exposing the functionality of an API as well as providing mechanisms for testing and validating the API. And so this is a very kind of developer-centric view of what I've built. On the other side, once we publish this to our Studio Connect, we're now kind of switching gears and saying, okay, now we're not necessarily trying to give the developer tools anymore, but rather we're trying to expose this in a way that's intuitive for the Tableau user to know what they need to do. And they don't need to know how the API request is formed. They don't need to know how the endpoint responds. What they need to know is how do I use this extension from Tableau? And so if we look at this document that's been pulled up here on our Studio Connect, we can see that's exactly what this is trying to provide. It gives the same you know, title description that we saw previously. And then it has this usage section here that defines, it's, it's a literal copy and paste Here's how you use this inside of Tableau. Copy this script function into your Tableau workbook under a calculated field, make a change to the input value to match what you're trying to provide from Tableau, and you're good to go. And we'll take a look at that in just a moment. And if we scroll down a little bit further, we see additional information about the arguments that we're expecting Tableau to provide, as well as the return value that we're going to be giving back to Tableau. And again, all of this is being powered by those additional annotations that we added when we introduced Plumber Tableau to our API. One thing that I'll note is that if we come back just for a moment to our development environment and take a look, when we defined Tableau return, we not only described what we're returning, but we were very specific about the type of data that we're going to be returning. And the reason for that is because if we come back now to our Studio Connect, you'll see that the script function is strongly typed, right? This is a script function. And then this STR is a reference to the fact that we expect a string value to come back from the extension. So because we because we provided information when we de de developed this that said, hey, we're going to return a character value, we know when we generate this documentation that we should put script string as the script function using this particular extension. And this, again, the idea is just convenience. We, we want to make this as easy as possible for the Tableau user for them to come in, copy, and paste this into their Tableau workbook. So let's do that. Let's do this in action. I'm going to grab this this script that we have here. We're gonna open up a new workbook on Tableau Online. I'm gonna zoom in. I've got to connect to a data source, so we'll just connect to the default one. I'm gonna zoom in here a little bit, just so we can see a little bit better. Um, first thing I'm gonna do is just save this, uh, because in order to use analytics extensions, we have to have a saved workbook. Go ahead and save that. And then I'm going to now create a parameter We'll call this input text. And this is this just gives us something that we can kind of in real time work with and see. So we're gonna say this is a string. The current value is hello world. Go ahead and hit okay there. And then let's actually show this parameter. So over here on the right hand side, we have this input text field and we can, we can use this field to input anything um, and it's referenceable from our Tableau workbook. And the significance now is we can now go through the process of creating a calculated field We'll call this caps. And here's where we're going to paste in that script function that we've copied from our Studio Connect. And you'll notice the first argument here is the location of this extension on our Studio Connect. All right, so this is the path to the extension as hosted on our Studio Connect. And then the second and any subsequent arguments are the values or reference to the values that we want to pass from Tableau to the extension. So I'm going to replace string value with input text which is a reference to our parameter that we created and then hit okay. And now we're gonna bring this calculated field into our workbook. So it'll take a moment to load. And then we're gonna, it automatically defaults to a color value, but we don't want that. We'll call this, a, we'll change this to be a label. 
And here we can see, and there's a way to expand it and I never remember how, but if we hover, we can see the capitalized rendered text of hello world. And just to, to showcase that it doesn't just do hello world, we can come over and say, this is an extension. And if we hover again, we see this is an analytics extension in, in full capitalization. Right? So we've gone through the full process of, we've developed this extension inside of our studio or some other editor using Plumber and Plumber Tableau. We published the extension to our Studio Connect where it can then be accessed and used by Tableau users who have to come in, let me come back to our Studio Connect, come in, copy the script value, paste it into their workbook under a calculated field and then supply the appropriate values to that, to that extension function. And in our case, that appropriate value, if I pull this up one more time, that appropriate value is this input text. Typically, right, again, very, very kind of trivial example. So in, in practice, what we might see here is we might see something like, you know, multiple values being passed in from the underlying data source that my Tableau workbook is built on top of. And then, and then we get really nice functionality where if a user comes in and filters the data or changes the view or otherwise manipulates the underlying data, that triggers this extension to, to reevaluate with new data. So it's, this is a very responsive real-time interaction between some third-party service, in our case, that third-party service is our Studio Connect, that's hosting this, this R script, this R function that we're running, uh, and it's responding in real time to how users are interacting with the Tableau workbook. Just to, to kind of highlight that, let me come back here. So here's an example. Let me see if this will pull up and render. It sometimes is a little bit finicky, but we'll see if we can make something happen. So here's an example of kind of something that's a little bit more involved, right? So we have, once this pulls up here, um, we have two different, actually two different extensions that are being hosted on our Studio Connect. One is an R extension that does real-time outlier detection, giving us, given a set of input data. So we, we consider a, this is a transactional data uh, set that we're working with here. So we consider sales and profit for a given customer. And then based on sales and profit, we determine which customers appear to be outliers given the, the totality of the data set. That all happens in R. Then we have a, another extension written in Python. So there's a kind of a, a companion package to Plumber Tableau called Fast API Tableau that does the same thing just on the Python side. And so we have another extension written in Python. In fact, let me just pull that up while that's loading. Uh, and this extension takes a previously trained model some input from Tableau and uses that input to generate new predicted values. And that allows us to do something in, in the case of our workbook, what we're doing is we're saying, okay, given what we know about this customer and then transactional history, what amount of profit do we predict out of this customer for this transaction? Uh, and so we take that predicted profit value, we compare it to the actual profit of the transaction, and then we can identify under and over performers based on that metric of comparing predicted to, to realize profit. Let me, just open up that example here. Okay, so this, this view is a little bit different than what we had seen previously. And the reason for this is the, the fast API Tableau package is, has a slightly different interface when it, when it comes to rendering the documentation that we generate for Tableau users. And there will be an update that gets made to the Plumber Tableau package that brings a similar style interface there as well. So there's a, a kind of more unified feeling between the two. But we see the same behavior here. We can come in and we can say use in Tableau workbooks. Same thing. We can copy and paste this, this value into our Tableau workbook. We have a description of what we're doing and the, and the values we're expecting. If I come back to Tableau here, let me see if I can get this to work. This, I just wanted to showcase like what it might look like in a more comprehensive example. Um, and so we should, we should be able to get this to come through here in a minute. It just takes a minute to wake Tableau up sometimes. So if I come in here, I just want to highlight this is we had sometimes it has a problem rendering, but if I look at this description of this particular extension, we can see here I'm referencing, you know, again, the location of the extension itself as it as it relates to our Studio Connect. And then here are the actual values that I'm passing in from my from my workbook to Tableau. So I have five different values that I'm passing in here. These are all inputs to the to the model that I trained. And then those values get used on the connect side or on the on the extension side to generate new predicted values when it comes to profit and and return that value back into here. Um, yeah, and I think because we restarted, we reset the 
the um, extension in the middle of this, it timed out. So I wasn't able to, to complete its trip. Um, anyway, so that's like at a very kind of, like I said, kind of simplistic level, that's the idea behind Plumber Tableau and by extension, Fast API Tableau is to say, look, let's say that I have some uh, business logic, I have some complex arithmetic or machine learning or whatever the case is that I need to do as some sort of like real time interaction with my Tableau work, what takes place. And, and whatever it is that I'm trying to do extends beyond what Tableau natively gives me in terms of capabilities, right? And, and that's often the case when it comes to machine learning. There's some rudimentary machine learning capabilities in Tableau, but if I'm, if I'm looking to do something a little bit more complex or involved or something like outlier detection, which is one of the examples that we provide in our, in our online repository, then this becomes a really compelling use case because I can essentially say like, I'm gonna take the data that I have in Tableau, I'm going to send it off somewhere for something to be done to it. And then I'm going to get the results back. And in this case, we've shown I can send that data off to RStudio Connect. This extension can execute and then return the results back into Tableau. And I can then further use those results to you know, improve my analysis or, or enhance my visualization or you know, whatever I'm doing with the results once they come back is, is up to me. There's a few caveats that I think are worth pointing out. One is Tableau is kind of interesting. Um, in, in the sense that if I'm passing in, you know, this, this is a pretty, again, trivial toy example, but if I'm, if I'm referencing a large underlying data set and I'm trying to pass that data set in bulk to my extension, it depends on how I'm actually calculating my calculated field inside of Tableau um, because Tableau will either send one request with all the data or it will send one request per observation, which can dramatically slow things down. So imagine I've got a hundred thousand rows of data um, I could, and accidentally, if I, if I haven't set things up the right way, I could accidentally end up sending 100,000 requests every time I try to use the extension. And that's certainly going to be much less efficient than sending just one request with 100,000 observations. And so there's, we have some documentation around things to look into and, and how to kind of go about reasoning around how, how to set up Tableau so that it sends a request uh, along the appropriate dimension so that you end up be working as efficiently as possible. The one other thing that I'll mention that we haven't discussed so far is how do we set these things up from, you know, like how do we set up the connection between Tableau and RStudio Connect? And that that's kind of a little bit beyond the scope of like Plumber Tableau itself, but I think it's worth just kind of understanding how that works. So if I come back to the homepage of Tableau Online and come to settings as an admin in Tableau Online, if I come over to extensions, Here's where I can do a couple of things. One, I can enable analytics extensions. So about halfway down the page, there's analytics extensions. I would choose to enable those for my site. And then there, there isn't anything pre-configured. So I need to create a new connection from this, from this option list. I'll select analytics extensions API, which is the final option. And then in here, we can say, we can give it a name, RStudio Connect, provide the host name, rstudioconnect.com and the port, uh, whatever that might be. The username is always rstudio-connect. And then the password here is any valid rstudio connect user API key. Um, and and the, the thing to understand about this setup, again, two things. One is this, is this is managed and done by the Tableau administrator. So individual users aren't managing connections at this level. This is done at the administrative level. And then when you create a workbook as a user, you can select which connection you wanna actually use from that workbook. So. It's done by the administrator. The other thing is this password is centrally used. And what I mean by that is whatever API key is, is input here by the Tableau admin is the key that will be used anytime an extension uses this connection. So if this key is like my own personal key, that means my personal RStudio Connect user has to be added to every extension that's published in order for it to be used from Tableau. Our recommended approach here is to create like a service account called Tableau or Tableau extension or really call it whatever you want, but then use a, an API key from that service account as the key that you, that you provide here in the setup on Tableau and then add that Tableau user, again, whatever you, you happen to have called that service account, add that user to every extension that's published so that they have, so that Tableau has the ability to call out to that extension. Okay, and I think like, again, a trivial example in terms of what we're actually doing, but, but hopefully highlights the kind of the flexibility of this approach and, and the way in which it can be used to extend the functionality of Tableau beyond just what's already there. Um, anyway, but that's, that's kind of Plumber Tableau in a, in a nutshell.